Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Presswell, and I'm so happy to be here to help honor our outstanding teachers, parents, and academic staff. I just want to take 10 seconds to thank Rochelle Ringer, my co-chair, Sonia Grinatelli, former, former HSA chair, all the teachers and staff that have helped me put this together, and these wonderful students, that, including my daughter Anna Ainge, woke up early this morning to help us out. On behalf of the Honorary Service Awards Committee, I would like to welcome you this morning to witness our 2014 honorees be recognized. So, without further ado, we will start with Bart Sampia. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Bard Salcido, and I'm a teacher here at Dos Pueblos High School. <laughs> and I'm very honored that Ms. Crespo asked me to speak today to present the 2013-2014 Honorary Service Award to Mr. Coach Califano. <laughs> high school football together here in town at San Marcos High School. Oh. <laughs> um, professionally, Coach Califano started his education career as a counselor. He was very successful, but his true passion was always athletics. Um, Coach Califano not only was a good football player in high school, but he was even a better wrestler, earning him a scholarship to Humboldt State University to wrestle at the collegiate level. In 1998, when very successful Coach Hart retired here from Dos Pueblos and the wrestling program, he was counseling over at San Marcos. So then Principal Cash and Athletic Director Scott O'Leary recruited um, Anthony to come over and coach at the high school. The program for uh, wrestling is 52 students. So imagine having 52 student athletes in a room about a quarter this size. <laughs> so, Coach Califano has excellent classroom management. <laughs> now I'd like to call up the real re one of the reasons why we're all here. So, from the back, please. Cameron, can you come up, please? Coach Mendoza, can you get Cameron? <laughs> yeah, Cameron's texting in the back right now. <laughs> Thank you. So I'd like to introduce to you, this is Cameron Cox. He's an 11th grade student athlete here at Dos Pueblos Senior High School. And he is one here. Give me some. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he is one of Coach Califano's 52 student athletes. Cameron here is a league champion, a state champion, and a USA Wrestling All-American. <laughs> I encourage everyone here to at least to visit a wrestling match. It is spectacular. They darken the entire gymnasium and they have this huge white light that comes right down in the middle of the gym on the wrestling mat. And these student athletes individually walk out into that light and then just fully scrap. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, when asked to speak today by Ms. Crespo, I went up to the wrestling room and I interviewed the wrestlers. And these are the words they had to say about Coach Califano. Coach Califano teaches the student athletes strength, confidence, team responsibility, 
personal responsibility. And one of the biggest ones I found powerful is that he teaches young student athletes courage. And so family, I would like to present to you the 2013-2014 Honorary Service Award, Mr. Coach Anthony Calfine. about each other <laughs> but it, it, it makes for a good time it's been it's been a fun run so far but, uh, thank you for this award Bart thanks for coming thank our next speaker will be Dan Feldhaus uh, good morning everybody I'm Dan Feldhaus uh, I am here to present an honorary service award to a parent who has really, really, really helped out our school quite a bit. Um, when I was work preparing this presentation, I uh, put in <laughs> my computer, thank you, I typed in honorary and looked at various synony synonyms. And very surprisingly, the, these words came up. Uh, synonyms for honorary were unpaid. Voluntary, <laughs> unsalary. <laughs> so, and and while these these words describe uh, this person and why we're honoring them, the other words I went down to the root and, and looked at the word honor, and that was more appropriate. Uh, examples were to revere, to admire, to venerate, to uh, take your hat off to, to essentially to uh, deeply thank, and that is my goal today is I uh, want to honor a parent who has served our school, served our students and parents far beyond the call of duty. Uh, five, years, uh, five, year, year, five years ago, a couple of us, Debbie and I and others, recognized that we had a need in our athletic department. We found that we had a group of students that would eat at about lunchtime and then would go to practice. <laughs> <laughs> and they would go to practice till about five or six o'clock, and they were they were hungry, and they needed something to hold them over. Uh, we had we wanted to f find some kind of nourishment or snacks for our students uh, to get get them through a long practice, a long day. We also saw a need that uh, we didn't have a very consistent snack bar for our visiting teams, for our visiting parents, and we wanted to provide that uh, for uh, people that visit in our school. We didn't have a consistent place where we sold our charger gear and sweatshirts and all that stuff. And lastly, is uh, I guess this is always a need. We, we needed to raise some money for the athletic department. <laughs> um, well, Debbie had a, a friend, and she uh, asked Nancy Peterson, who we honored a couple years ago, somewhere <coughs> in the um, a couple years back. Uh, Debbie contacted Nancy Peterson, who graciously stepped up and... Uh, agreed to help us out and, and had this uh, effort. And from what I understand, the first person she called to was the person that I, the first person she called, the person I'm honoring today, we're honoring today. Um, uh, and it was a friend of hers that she knew from the GVGSA. She ran the snack bar down at the uh, softball fields for many years and was a pro down there, apparently. Uh, that, that person that Nancy called turned out to be one of the keys to our success with our snack shack. Uh, and that person that I would like to present an honorary service award today is Karen Zudi. Karen. Okay, I got a few more things to say here. So, 
So Karen, like I said, has been one of the key figures in running in the day-to-day -day running of our, uh, our Snack Shack for the last five or six years. Uh, Karen's duties are quite numerous. <laughs> not only uh, does she actually man this, uh, the Snack Shack quite a bit, not only for after school, but for evening school, after school events, night events. She also oversees most, a lot of the ordering, a lot of the accounting. <laughs> she helps us coordinating the parent volunteers, depositing, making the deposits. Uh, Denise knows her very well. Right? <laughs> uh, and multiple other duties assigned to the daily operation of the Snack Shack. Um, I asked Nancy Peterson exactly <coughs> to give me a rough idea of how many hours Karen has volunteered in the Snack Shack. And I was shocked when she told me. She said, uh, that in, the, in the heyday, and, and Karen's kind of dialing dial back a little bit this year, but um, it averaged about 15 to 20 hours volunteering in the Snack Shack a week. Um, and I kind of did some calculations for about four years. That's nearly 3,000 hours of giving back to our school, giving back to our students and staff and parents. The crazy part, the amazing part of Karen and what she's done for our school is her daughter graduated like two years ago. <laughs> she is still here helping us out. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, and I also just want to mention the financial benefit that the Snack Shack has provided our athletic department uh, through the funds from the, raising the Snack Shack, among other things, it was able to provide transportation, paying for officials, uh, and basically have, have given us the financial funds to run our athletic department. In fact, through funds from the Snack uh, Shack, we were able to buy two vans in the last couple of years. Wow. So, very, very awesome. <laughs> So um, I, I am uh, so appreciative of Karen and all that she's done, her dedication to our students and our school. I cannot thank her enough for all that you've done for our department, our students, and I would like to bestow the Honorary Service Award to Karen City. Commiserate not only about our profession but about men. <laughs> I was in a shaky marriage at the time and she was on the dating scene and getting really discouraged. For her, promising relationships would somehow fizzle. Guys who at first seemed all starry eyed and bright eyed for a variety of reasons lost the flow for her. <laughs> and I urged her to keep believing because I knew that someday somebody special would come along and see what I saw. A beautiful, driven, profoundly caring, and brilliant woman. And someone did, of course. Ten years ago, someone scooped her up and made her the center of his world. And they now have a beautiful family that runs high to daughters. And that's a ninth grade joke. And those of you who want to know what it means can ask a ninth grade English teacher. <laughs> this teacher has enriched the lives of a hugely diverse group of students, ranging from newcomers 
who speak little English to those struggling to become reclassified as proficient English speakers, to sophisticated scholars, fluent in language and literature. She's taught everything from Read 180 to IB English to English 3D, I think. We love our acronym, acronym spelling. <laughs> Offering every single one of them a burning heart full of expertise, persistence, and love. She is a fierce and unrelenting advocate and a mentor who wears all of her expectations on her sleeve. And I suspect she wears down her most recalcitrant students until they give in and start performing for her. <laughs> and she does it all with grace and purpose and kindness. But don't let that grace and kindness fool you because there is nothing soft about this woman's resolve. She has a terrier mind. <laughs> like she pounces on something and she won't let it go until she's got it fully, and I mean fully secured. This girl can be scary. <laughs> As anyone knows who's been on the receiving end of one of her email crusades. <laughs> Luckily for us here at DP, this Jack Russell terrier disguised as an English teacher got her jaws around the idea of a writing center, which she clenched in her vice-like grip and laser focus until she got it done. And I attended these meetings in the beginning at what I naively thought were like the early planning phases, and I was just astounded at the level of research and thought and logistical and emotional detail that she had already carried out. It was like breathtaking. She spent a year planning and organizing in a good part of her summer, training her tutors, and now DP is the envy of Santa Barbara schools because we have this real live writing center with this person at the heartbeat of it. And I heard a rumor that she's working with UCSB to join forces with their tutoring center, and maybe this person too will someday have her own building <laughs> I like to call this person the conscience of the English department because as long as I've known her, she's had the eyes and the soul of somebody who most clearly sees what is lacking, where the holes are, where the voids need to be filled. And as usual, her voice is clear, relentless, and incisive. And as usual, it is simultaneously kind and unflinching. One colleague characterized her as kind, hardworking, fun, important part of the DP community. Another blazoned her 14-year tenure as rich with outstanding teaching and collegiality. Another lauded her unwavering dedication to the EL population every single day, citing numerous students who would not have passed the first semester without the help of her and her expert tutors. And finally, someone who summed it up simply just said, she truly changes lives. Robin, I cannot think of a more deserving teacher than you to receive this award, an accolade so meaningful because it comes from your own people. And I want you to remember our old mantra from Ian e. Forster's novel, and you made the words resonate with truth, only connect. about these awards is like finding out about people like Karen, who I didn't even know 
you know, <laughs> existed, and here she is, and she's doing great things, and just, you know, between the people I know and the people I don't know, there's just so much great stuff going on here. And I'm going to take a moment to shamelessly plug the new schedule. <laughs> it would really help us with the writing center to make it more effective, get those kids in here who need it the most and just will not come. And so, please. <laughs> and thank you. <laughs> Right now, someone's mind is spinning something crazy, realizing that she was tricked and that it is not me receiving this award today. This extraordinary woman is my confidant and my best friend. She is Socorro. the latest news before I head upstairs to find my office pre-warmed because she was already plugged in my heater. Sometimes there will be flowers, nuts, or fresh fruit waiting for me. And I, if I ever need chocolate, I know where to go. <laughs> Socorro is so caring. She will even text me in the morning if I'm not my prompt self because she worries about me being home alone. This woman can be seen racing around on a mini Zamboni <laughs> or looking like an official Ghostbuster with the vacuum strapped to her back. She manages a spotless environment in our locker room, one that could very well look like a bedroom of 1,200 teenage girls. <laughs> she is Mama Socorro in countless ways, whether it's guarding valuables, handing out feminine products or hair ties, parenting, even if they don't want to hear it, <laughs> flashing a smile, or sharing Kleenex for a hormonal drama. <laughs> Socorro works extremely hard and takes great pride in a job well done. She is always thorough and conscientious. She works up a sweat long before most of us arrive at school. You can always count on her speaking her mind, hence her excellent communication skills. Even though Socorro wore green and gold for many years before becoming a Charger, she is certainly dedicated to DP, both to our students and to our staff. I am so lucky to have someone so special beside me, to hug me, to make me laugh, to compare our aches and pains, and most of all, to remind me to breathe when necessary. <laughs> Socorro, you are most deserving of this Honorary Service Award. this award. I'm very happy to be here, Mr. Bob Evans. So I, I called Bob up here because I want to make fun of him for a little bit. I want everybody to look at him. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a few uh, comments and then I'll explain them later. You aren't funny. You can't dance. You're, you're definitely not quiet. You really don't like cell phones. And you definitely don't need nurses. 
I'll explain all those a little bit later. <laughs> so there is a rich history, and this is something I didn't know until I talked to his wife about this, uh, uh, in, in teaching for uh, the Evans bloodline. His mother was a teacher at Adams for a long time. And this is my favorite part. His father was the Dean of College of Men at UCSB. Wow. Yeah. So when Bob decides, hey, I want to go to college, like an idiot, he goes, oh, I'll go to the school where my dad is the dean. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing I would want if I'm going to college. <laughs> so he was not only the dean, but he was the dean at the time of the bank burning. He's the guy on the steps going, calm down. <laughs> so like a gigantic hippie that he is, Bob decided maybe I should go elsewhere, and he transferred to... No, I was at Cal Poly first. Oh, Cal Poly first, then to UCSB, okay. So, after college, Bob decides that he's going to get a career in general contracting, so I don't know how many of you knew that, but he was a general contractor for a while, and it, and it served him really well because he just completed his own house, or <laughs> almost completed his own house. <laughs> he's just every now and then sure he's working on it. Uh, however, when it came time to have kids, he and his wife decided maybe one of us should have a stable job, and this is, it sounds kind of like an oxymoron for all the beginning teachers, but, you know, eventually teaching becomes stable. And, and he decided to go back to school and become a teacher. So uh, he goes back to school at UCSB and um, the teacher education program where he learned under uh, the great Neil Abello, who um, I also worked with, and uh, it's kind of a legend in the biology world for us anyway. And... Um, in 1999, Bob took on his own student teacher, uh, who would much later embarrass him in front of a crowd just like this. <laughs> Actually, exactly like this crowd. Uh, I think my biggest memory of that year was when I used a Sharpie to write on a whiteboard. <laughs> And uh, now, having taught with Bob for the uh, past 14 years, I can't wait for him to retire. <laughs> because I get to eat a Twinkie that's been sitting on his wall for the last 10, 13 years. 10 years. I made a comment once that Twinkies have this shelf life for, you know, whatever, 10, 12 years. Like, no one would eat one. I'm like, I would. He's like, all right. So he put one up on his wall. <laughs> So Bob is a Bob is a really hard worker, really honestly, and he, he really doesn't complain much. Um, he's been teaching college prep bio, AP bio, and IB bio for a long time now. Um, and to set up all those labs, just to have three preps is tough enough, but to have three lab preps is a completely different story. Um, he's very dedicated to the students. So, now back to the opening remarks. You're not funny. <laughs> Apparently, at Goleta Valley Junior High, uh, one day his daughter was there with him. They're riding home in the car. Dad, you know, you're not funny. All the kids just laugh just to make you feel good. <laughs> but I can attest, I've been in his room several times and it's like a giant one-liner all day long. <laughs> Uh, second one, you can't dance. So he had a student a few years back, special needs student, and somehow got fired up uh, for Bob to do uh, the talent show. And so Bob decides to do a tuba routine <laughs> with some form of ballet dance or something like that to go along with it. So Bob's so worried about the tuba that he's practicing that the whole time and doesn't practice the dancing part. <laughs> the day before, he decides to start practicing the dancing part and quickly realizes, uh-oh. <laughs> but he goes up there anyways and does his best. And, and afterwards, the student said, that was the best tuba show I've ever seen. <laughs> but that's the type of stuff that means a lot to us. You know, when you have a kid, you make that connection. And Bob has made many, many, many of those connections. You're definitely not quiet. I, I think that's easy. That you walk by this half of the campus and you hear Bob talking in his classroom. Definitely no microphone needed for him. Uh, 
you don't like cell phones. So uh, there is, when we first went to the no cell phone policy, Bob decides, okay, I'm gonna do this right. And he sets it up with another, with a student in his class to where he's gonna take the cell phone from them during class, but it's like an old one that he had already had. And he grabs it and he takes it from the classroom and takes out a hammer and starts smashing the cell phone. It's like the first day of school. And all the kids in his class are just like. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna mess with Mr. Evans. And, uh, and one of my favorite ones, you definitely don't like nurses. I'm gonna try to do my best Bob impersonation here. So we're in our, um, our group meetings, our bio group meetings, and um, I was talking about something that had nothing to do with healthcare. And Bob goes, huh, what? Nurses, what do I need nurses for? <laughs> it's time to retire, Bob. <laughs> but, Really, Bob receives this award today because of his undying love for his students. Uh, he's definitely a teacher who loves high school students, and he's, he's perfect for the job. And I'm, I'm really proud just to even be remotely associated with him. So, Bob Evans, everybody. <laughs> Thank you again. If all of our recipients can stand for one last acknowledgement. 